morning. This is Dale Fai. I'm the leader of the accessusergroups.org Eastern Time Users Group. This morning we are joined by Andrew Zebro, who is a Microsoft MVP, has been presenting at a number of different conferences over the years throughout Europe and in America. And today he's going to talk to us about the Access Layout Grid. Anders, I'm going to pass control to you. Thank you. And hopefully you can all see my screen. If you can't, give me a shout. So I'll just dive right into my presentation. So my presentation today is about the Access Layout Grid. As uh, Dale's already introduced me, my name is Anas Ebo, and I'm a principal consultant at a company called uh, Exacto in, out of Denmark. I've been a Microsoft MVP for actually coming up on seven years, but apparently I forgot to edit this part of the slide. I only edited the, the year. So we'll just continue. Uh, as I said, I'm from Denmark and live just north of Copenhagen, and I'm married. I have uh, three wonderful kids who are all driving me nuts, especially in these days as they're all at home. And I'm trying to school them at the same time as uh, trying to do work. And uh, you might hear them sometime during this presentation if they decide to come running into the room. I have been working as a consultant with this company. We're a small company which has just about 18 employees. We work primarily on SQL Server based solutions where we create front ends in either Excel or Access or sometimes even both. And we try to market ourselves to Excel users and then we try to sell them on database solutions. So I originally studied to become an engineer, researcher in applied physics. And then I got hired to do railway safety analysis because I had trouble getting a work as a researcher. And one of the things I ended up doing was making a database that was recording information about uh, these uh, safety error messages that were, could occur during a, uh, when a train is running. And I figured this database stuff was much more fun than doing safety analysis. And I just started doing more and more database projects. And by the end of 2008, I was actually a full-time access developer. So I'll just throw in a shameless plug right here and say, I have some videos on how to use a tree view in access. If that's of interest to you, you can find them on my blog. This is the address, www.thesmileycoder.com. And I also on my site have a access crash reporter, which you can use uh, free of charge. And what it does is basically you in, just import the modules into your access application. And in your error handling, you can just call this module. And it's going to bring up a dialogue just like this, where you can collect a lot of information and collect screenshots uh -huh. of the access application. And then you can have the application email that information back to you. So you get these error messages. And there's also some functionality I wrote there, which can do a comparison of text and highlight references, kind of like word track changes, but implemented it in access. My programming will highlight these changes as they occur. So what's the agenda for this session? I'm going to talk about what is the layout grid. I am going to share with you how I use it during design time to assist me. I'm going to talk a bit about what are, are the different layout types, what are grid lines, what are padding and spacing, which are all specific to the layout grid. I will also talk about how we can use it during runtime, uh, how we can uh, have anchoring and stretching. So that is for when the user is using our application. And finally, I'm going to show you a lot of cool coding features using the grid. So what is the Access Layout Grid? Well, the Layout Grid was first introduced with Access 2007, and it's a table-like overlay for your controls, which can give you design time assistance for both adding and resizing controls so that different controls resize together. And it can also give you runtime assistance for stretching a control if the user has a large monitor stretching a form if the user has a large monitor again or a small monitor. And as I said, we can use it, use some of these properties through code to develop new features. So there are two layout, basic layout types. There's the stack layout, which is the default for the single view form. And there's the tabular, which is the default for our continuous forms. So if we take a quick look at creating a table, or we have a table, we're going to create a single user form for it. We can see the layout grid is outlined 
by these dotted lines. And if I click here, we can see that the layout, this is the layout grid. All of the controls are in the layout grid. And if we try to create the same form as a continuous form, you see there's this small, it might be hard to see against the gray background, there's this small icon at the top left corner, which allows you to select all of the controls in the layout grid. So you can see for the continuous form that the layout grid extends into the header section. So it can actually cross the boundaries between different sections. So one more thing is to say that the layout grid doesn't really have anything to do with the layout view, except that in layout view, you can also use it to resize controls. So if we return to the presentation, so what difference does it make which layout type you have? So the primary difference is that the layout type seems to only affect your design time experience. It doesn't seem to have any real effect on what happens when the user is using it or applications. There's something when, for instance, the if you're using a stacked layout and you're adding a new control, see how that works. We go up here in design, add existing fields, and I drag in a new control. You can see here in my stacked view, the label is added to the left, and you can see that the label is also now, both the label and the control are part of the grid. In the tabular layout, and you can see where, if we go into design, arrange, you see here it says stacked and tabular. If I add a control here, go add existing fields, pull in our department, you can see that the department control is added here and the label is automatically added to the header. Now, another thing to point out is that if I just drag a control and place it randomly, it's not automatically added to the grid. If I drag it and place it right next, you can see this small light purple line showing up telling me where are you trying to add it. So of course, I might want to add it here. And you can see it fits in nicely. It squeezes apart or pushes apart the other controls instead of if I do it down here, controllers are just placed on top of each other. So the layout grid is an easy way to add new controls because the other controls are automatically pushed aside. I don't have to do anything with selecting all of the controls and moving them first. And if I go ahead and delete a control, you can see that as long as I delete both, then they are both pushed aside or moved back in place. If I drag a control, you can see it's missing. It didn't bring the label, but I can bring the label afterwards. This might leave me with empty cells. If I delete an empty cell, you can see that if there are no controls left, then the column is deleted as well. See, if I delete department, column is left. If I delete here, the column is still left. But if I go in the final time and say, let me delete these empty cells, Access is smart enough to figure out that you want to delete the column now. Let's just get back. I have our presentation again. Sadly, there seems to be this, uh, let's call it bug or feature, that if I start with a tabular layout, as in my continuous form, Still tabular, but if I add something that doesn't really fit into a tabular design, you can see I added it down here now at the top instead of adding it between two controls as I did earlier. Now, if I save this form and reopen it, Access might say, I can't really figure out how this is supposed to be a tabular layout and switch the type to stacked, which is going to affect how new controls are added. So that, that's a bit of an annoying bug, but just so you're aware that you might think you've made a tabular layout, but suddenly it's not anymore. This used to be a physical presentation. So I had a quick show of hands saying uh, how many in here have used the layout grid in their applications. And my experience has been that not many people use the layout grid. Most seem to just skip right to this option of thinking it's a waste of time and just going up and say, remove layout. But I hope I can change your mind about that.
Again, this was a physical presentation, so I used to ask the group why they're not using it. But I will just skip ahead. I know that in 2007, the first release of the layout grid had a limitation in that it couldn't have empty controls. So if we take something like the higher date, which we don't really want to be that wide, if I try to resize the higher date, you can see it resizes all of the columns for me. But, you know, I might want the higher date to be a small control and employee name to be wide. But we can work around this since 2010 and forward because they added the ability to merge or split cells. So I take my higher date and I say I want to split it horizontally. And you can see Access now pulled in a empty control here. So now I can resize my higher date have my job titles, whatever, be longer. If I go ahead and have the control down here and say, I also want to split this, you can see how it's actually going to split into the same size. So Access thinks of this as you having a couple of columns, three columns. And so this control is both in column two and three, where this is only in column two. That way we can move around our controls and have a, a couple of controls that are short width and a couple of controls that are much longer. So it gives you kind of an easy way to make sure that if you want to just change this and be a bit shorter, the other controls are also going to change. So you don't have to worry about suddenly ending up with a control that is not aligned with the other controls. You see all of these labels, they're nicely left aligned. Before the layout grid, I remember sometimes I was just accidentally moving a control. You know, I, I intended to right-click on it. I ended up moving it just half an inch or just a couple of pixels, and I didn't notice it. And then people were complaining, ah, oh, your labels, they're not aligned. But with the layout grid, your labels are always going to be aligned. Your controls are going to be aligned. But that was one of the reasons people didn't use it, because without the empty control, you had these issues. Design time assistance. So the layout grid can help us with our form layout. As I just said, it makes sure our controls are aligned. And as you saw earlier, when we insert a new control, it automatically pushes away other controls. And this even goes for when we are moving controls up and down. See, it automatically pushes our other controls aside. And more than that, since we have, this is called the padding, the distance between controls. It makes sure that our padding is consistent. The distance between all of our controls is the same. It gives a much easier look. Now, personally, I think this is too much white space between controls. So if we want to change that, there's an easy way to change the padding for all of our layout grid. We can either do it on a control by control basis and go up into the control padding and for instance, set it to narrow. Or we can say, well, I want all of my controls here to be narrow controls. So you can see all of our controls now have the same distance between them. In continuous forms, personally, I prefer to go the route of saying I don't want distance between them. So I'll take the padding and set it to none. No padding for our continuous forms. So one of the other things is this uh, aligning of header and detail sections. So in our continuous form, if we, without the layout grid, if we were moving a control here, we would also have to remember to move or resize the label. Now, all of the controls I inserted here, they're based on the default setting for controls on the form. But let's say I've, I've changed around the layout a bit without changing the actual default controls. Let's say I've decided that these controls should see. I wanted these controls to be just a tad, oh, that wasn't what I wanted. Background control to be just a slight tad of gray. And I want the text to be white. So if I add a control now, notice how the position of the control is important. So if I add my department control here, notice how the department control actually inherited the layout properties of the control to the left of it. So I don't have to use format pasting to make sure that my control now fits 
this new layout. It automatically adjusts to the layout. If I add the control over here, you see it inherited the control to the left of it and is formatted the same way. But it's also an easier way to make sure your forms are consistently formatted. I think that was all I had here. Uh, I remember once someone mentioned to me that they couldn't extend the grid to the footer or header. So if we take a look at our continuous form, now it might be that we wanted some sort of counting at the bottom and we'd go ahead and we'd take our text box, add it, we'd say, well, we want this to be the count of ID and try to make sure it's aligned. Oh, it's not quite aligned. Oh, it's nearly there, but oh, it's not the same size. Either way, what we can do with the layout grid is we can click here, any control, go to the arrange tab. Most of the things with the layout grid is in the arrange tab. And I'm gonna say this move down. Now, notice what happened is that the control moved down, but it also added a whole section, whole line, of empty controls down here. Now, of course, I don't want my ID control to be down here. So I'll just move the ID back up and I'll see if I can catch this, my count control. I managed to catch the empty cell, but I can move my count into this empty cell. Notice how it's now the same width as this column. And if I resize a control in this column, the bottom cells are also automatically readjusted and realigned. So we've also talked a bit about layout padding, how we can use it to make sure our design is consistent. It will be fairly quickly to go through a database, open all the forms and say, well, now I wanna use a narrow layout all over, or I wanna use a wide layout all over. And as I've showed you, you can split or merge as your requirements demand. So this brings us to borders. Now, if any of you have used Access for a while and you've tried to have a report and you wanted to create a border around some controls or just have a control that just has a left border or just has a bottom border, you can't do that with just a regular text box or a label. But with the layout grid, we can add borders that are just on one side of controls. And we can use this both for forms, and I have to use it in my continuous form. Uh, let me just erase this because I did a couple of changes to that. And let's go and create a new blank form. As I said, I prefer the narrow for padding or none for padding. And let's see how this looks. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't look too big, pretty. I don't like all of these borders. So I'm gonna turn off the borders for these controls. Let's see, border style, transparent, and go back. Well, now it's kind of hard to see where one record ends and another begins. You could start adding lines, but then again, you'd have to remember to resize that line if something on the form changes. So instead, I'm going to go look at the grid line style. And you'll notice there's four grid line styles. There's one for top, bottom, left, and right. So I'll take the bottom one, say I want this one to be solid, and I want this color to be, let's see, I want it to be just this shade of blue. And you can see that now I have a line that cuts across all of my controls that is showing up in blue. And if something changes on my form, if, if I remove a control or if I resize a control, my line is also gonna automatically adjust. And this also works for reports where we might want to have more specific grid lines. Something like this used, I mean, I've created something like this in old style access, which literally meant you had to draw on the form through coding. So you'd have to have code that would create each and every one of these lines. 
But here I can just say that, well, this, I only want a student in design view. So for the order details, you can see this one look, has, uh, see, so it has a solid for the left style. The other ones are transparent. The order caption also has a solid for the left style. So that takes care of these two borders here. And the top border is actually defined by the control up here, having a solid style at the bottom. And you can look more at this. You're, you're, you're going to get this database. But you can see if you're having, if you want to create reports that include lines, these grid lines can really help you make a lot easier work. So this brings us to runtime assistance. We can have more flexible forms if we use anchoring. For instance, we might want to have a nice menu. So this is our nice menu, which looks great on my screen because it, you know it's it's I created it on my screen. But let's say someone comes along and they have a much bigger monitor than me. Not that that would ever happen. But if we if they open it, these nice controls might end up looking like this, being in the top left corner. They're not that pretty. They, they look kind of you know kind of silly. Why are they in the top left corner? Let's see, what if we were able to make it so it resizes with our form? Now they're centered. And if I go ahead and resize my form, notice how my controls are still always at the center of my form. There's a limit, you know, if, if I make it too small, smaller than the original form, I start getting some controls cut off. But you really have to have a small form or a small screen for that to be an issue. But you can see they're, they're, they look much nicer. They're going to work much better on multiple different resolutions. So how did I actually make this work? What I did was I had my form. So this form here, see, this is the menu form that has my controls. And I added it into a layout grid. Now I specifically made these empty cells quite large because I wanted it to have some space around it. I didn't want the menu buttons to take up all the space. But if we go look at the anchoring, you see the top one is set to stretch across top. This means it will stretch across the top and these controls here are also set to anchoring, stretch across top look at this one this one is set to stretch down and across so our four menu buttons is going to stretch both to the right and down this one is going to not be taller but it is going to stretch across if we make the, the form wider and these one are set to stretch down which means as I move the form down all of these controls are going to be taller so using this anchoring technique, we not only get a centered form, but we also get a form that can actually resize a bit for us. It's not, you know, perfect. We're not going to get automatically resizing of, of font size or stuff like that. But I still think it's a, it goes a, a long way to making a more professional looking app. So we can also use this in our controls. So if we take our continuous form from earlier. Let's say we want some of these controls. See, we have a lot of white space over here that we're not really using. Now, I could go ahead and say, well, I'm just going to take these three controls. I'm going to start making them wider. But that might not work if our user opens it up on a small form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set the anchoring. Looking at this, I go to my Arrange tab, Anchoring, Stretch Across Top. Now, one of this, this is another kind of bug in, in Access because it only affected one of my controls. You see, this one is still top left. So even though I had three controls selected, it only affected the employee name. So I have to go to each of these individually and say Stretch Across Top. And you can also experience Sometimes you think you've set your controls to stretch the way you want them, 
And sometimes Access will say, well, that combination I don't think is really valid. So it's going to remove some of the properties and reset them to top left. So sometimes it can get a bit tricky trying to get the stretching set up. But once it's set up, it, it usually works pretty flawless. So let's see how this works. So now these three controls, the employee name, job titles, and department, they are all stretching. And they're sharing the space. So if I make my form three inches wider, each of these controls is going to get three extra inches. While, say, my hire date and termination date, they're going to stay the same width. So I'm much more taking advantage of a bigger form. Again, there can be issues with this. If your user has a, f uh, a monitor that's three times larger than your yours, these employee name, job titles, department, they might get, you know, ridiculously large. So it, 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 it's, it's a balance trying to make sure where you're using this uh, stretchability or anchoring to the best use. But I like that instead of having a lot of white space, we're now using that white space more effectively. And I also have a small demo of trying to show how we could use it in the other way. I've set up this kind of split form where we have a single form up top and a form down below. What we can see is that my single form is not, it's still aligned top left. It has the same size I've, I've set it to, but my continuous form is set to stretch down. So right now you see we get our scroll bar, but let's say the user has a bigger monitor. And if we enlarge the access form, notice how the continuous form is actually getting more space. So if the user has a big form or big monitor, he can view more records at the same time. I would much prefer this than having the user's form be cut off, only showing half of the bottom. So usually what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the continuous form is just small enough that you can see one or two records, and then make sure your anchoring is set, and you can see on this one, I didn't want it to become wider, so I've just set it to, uh, I thought I had set it to stretch down and across. I think maybe these are the ones that are set to stretch down and across. Uh, stretch across top. Uh, now I managed to mess it up. As I said, sometimes when you mess around with this, the, uh, the anchoring properties are reset. So I'll just not save it and try to view it again. So now it's stretching back. Okay, so that was my split forms demo, moving along. So this is the ugly part about using the layout. As I said, sometimes when you're adding new controls, you can risk that if you've set anchoring up, that that existing anchoring is gonna get messed up or changed. And there's also some combinations of anchoring that you can actually set through code that you can't set through the design grid. So there's there's definitely a couple of, of bugs in here. And if you're serious about it, if you find a bug, you can email it to me and I'll send it along to the access team. I, I try to bug them on a continuous basis. So that was the runtime assistance. So that allows us to resize forms on the fly without even having any code. But what if we start adding code to our forms. How can we, can we use this layout grid? Because there's some properties in the layout grid. All of the controls in a layout grid, they belong to one group. And you can get the, the column of the uh, control. What is the controls layout column and the layout row? So I'm gonna show how we can sort this by label. So let me take once more my employees. I think I, I closed the form before. And I'm gonna create a new form. So I wanna make it easy for the user to sort. Now, I, I've added some code into this database and tried to make it as reusable as possible. So if I go into my form, and we'll say here, where was my form? This was the form. Form, load. And I'll go my toolbox, 
say add layout sortability. And that's about it. Let's see if that works. So now, with just that one line of code, I've now added the ability to click on any column in the header and have my form change its sorting. See, it even automatically adds this small arrow to say, well, now you're sorted ascending, now you're sorted descending. So just one line of code. And what it does is when I click the label, well, let's, let's have a quick look at the code because I don't want to use all the time on this code, but I do like to talk about code. And there's just one question. Does that apply? Can, can you select multiple columns to, and to do that sort? Not currently. I have considered trying to expand it, like saying if you're shift click a column, then add that column to the sort instead of instead of changing to that. But I also think that in most users, they just want to sort by one column. And in the few cases that they really want to sort by a different column, well, maybe they really need to have access to the right-click menus and, and use some advanced sorting. You know, this that makes is, sense. This is good for, I would say, 90, 95% of all continuous forms. Uh, so I wanted to show the code, so I'll go and look at the definition. So you can see... I have a toolbox, which is a standard module. And in here is where I do my add layout sortability. You don't really need to look at this code, just, just know that it works. But what it does is it creates a new collection. And uh, for each of the controls in the code context object. So if you've never heard of the code context object, that is the code object that called this form or this code. So since this code is running in this form, this form will be the code context object. I initially had set this up with something where you had to pass in the parameter of the form. I would pass in me, but I realized that by using the code context object, we don't even have to pass in the object. We can just call it. So. It loops through all of the controls and say, well, it's, if it's a label, I want to declare a new label sortable. And I, I have another down here, label sortable, which is a class module. And I pass in the control. And I, I finally, I add it to my collection. I need to add it to my collection because I need to have a, a, this collection that contains all of the references. Otherwise, whenever this, this code runs, then that collection will fall out of scope and will be cleaned up. So my master collection, collection sortable master, is a public object or a module level object. So it doesn't get reset. And what the label does, let's, let's go have a look at that. So I pass in this label, and I have a couple of, of objects defined. And note that I've defined my label with events. This means that within this class module, my label can source events. So you can see up here, I both have class, but I also have my label. And any event that can be defined on a label, you can see here, such as click, double click, mouse down, mouse move, mouse up. And I've only declared events for the click. And you can see that what happens when you click it is that it tries to make sure if this has a bound control. What do I mean by bound control? I mean, labels don't have bound controls. But part of what the initial setup does when I initialize this is that it looks for the bound control. And what it does is this code, I won't go into it, it's basically just saying, well, look if there is any object which is in the same layout grid, so it's searching this layout grid, is there any control in the same column that has a control source? So it's going to find just this one. This works great on a continuous form. So it finds this control. Pass it in this label, it's going to find this control. Pass in this label, it's going to find this control. 
So it has a bound control. If I pass in this label, it's not going to find any bound control, so nothing's going to happen when I click on it. Because part of what it looks for is saying, well, if I don't have a bound control when you click on me, I'm just going to go ahead and exit. So that is the magic of using the layout grid to figure out which control in my detail section is connected to a label in the header section. And the rest is really just about saying, well, if there's any sorting markers, you know, the small arrow that was pointing up or down, if there's already some of those, I want to strip them out. And then it looks for the control source and it's saying, well, we might need a square bracket, so it adds a square bracket if we need it. And then it changes the order by to match the control source by either descending or ascending. So if it's already set to control source, that means it's ascending. Then we switch it to descending, and we add that label, that small arrow that goes up or down. Uh, so that is that was a quick overview of that code. So if we return to our presentation, we can also see, I like to call this the easy search and filter or auto filter. Uh, again, this is something I use in continuous forms and it's, it's rather quick to set up. What I do is I go ahead and select all of my controls. I hit uh, control C, go up in the header, hit control V. I drag them down here. Just notice how I try to position, since I I'm dragging the first control. I want to position it under the first label. So they're here now. And what I do is I go to the control source. I just hit space, delete my space. And now the control source was cleared for all of these objects. And one more thing, I'll go down here and I add a tag and say search control within some brackets, say true, and search control. So this is an XML-like uh, indication. And I try to use this XML because that means I can have as many tags as I want. I don't have to worry about them. There's other ways that you can def have multiple tags or multiple strings in a, in a tag, but this is the notation I like to use. So I've now defined that all of these controls here are search controls. Save that. Let's go over here to my form and say, so I want the uh, private my filter as auto filter form. I need a public base SQL as string. And I'll set my filter equal new auto filter form and I will say uh, so my filter dot apply filter. Let's make sure that it gets an initial setup. I will say the base SQL is equal to select star from table employees. So the reason I, I want it to be a select statement and not just say table employees is, to, you know, it could be that you've set up your form to say only select from employees where active equals true. So you might have, you know, an initial where clause that you need to always be applied that isn't really depending on the filter. So you can actually combine having a where clause here with the filter that my code provides for you. So let's try to see if, if I manage to do this without typos. Nope. Uh, let's close this and try again. So one of the things I think I forgot was to do the cleanup. There needs to be a line of, of, of cleanup code as well is saying so toolbox dot clean up layout sortability and I also need to clear the my filter set it to nothing so this is the cleanup 
for the layout sortability, and this is the cleanup for the auto filtering. So let's see if it works now. So let's see, my filter. Let's go ahead. I think it's something with. I'm trying to remember whether I call it base SQL or call it something else. It's been a while since I used this. Oh, it had to be base underscore SQL. So I'll go back here. Base SQL, reset my project, sure. Base SQL down here. Okay, I hope I'm not going too fast. I close that down. Go back to my employees. I'm going to close this. Yes, and open it up again. So now it opened without errors, and let's see if it works. Now all of these controls are now something where I can type stuff. So if I type, I want to search, I don't, I don't, I don't want to search for someone in the fire department. So now I've added something that is really easy for the user to search, and you can use the same search function all over your database. So no more having to create specific search forms. Um, you can combine it, say, well, I want someone who's in the fire, but I want, let's say, a medic in the fire department. Oh, medic in the fire department. Now I have all medics in the fire department. And you now I think he was named Patrick or something. So I'm now searching on Patrick. It also works on dates by converting the date into a string. And there's just one. Yeah, just go ahead. question here. Um, is this functionality this functionality that you're you're defining now is not layout grid specific? Is it or is it is I mean is it layout grid specific or is it more continuous form specific and is taking advantage of your class modules to add this functionality? So yeah, it's it's using the layout grid to make this association between the job title or the the, the label. The, uh, the control here, my search control, and what is that control bound to? So if you had an easy way to do that on a continuous form that didn't use the layout, then sure, you could use the same code, but by using, by taking advantage of this layout, I get all of that easy functionality with just these couple of lines of code. I'm not cluttering my form with lots of code that I have to maintain or copy paste to the next form that I'm creating. Right. It works the same way across multiple forms. So it's reusable. Great. Okay, thanks. So, uh, da, da, da. and of course, this still works in combination with my search ability or my sort ability. So that was my easy search and filter. So, what about if we were able to actually allow the user to make up his own mind about how he wants the form to be resizable? So let's see if we could add that. So you see, I'm, I'm back at my continuous form where I haven't set up stretching yet. So I'll go into design view and go into code view. So here, I'll say toolbox. Toolbar, toolbox, difficult word. Add resizability to controls. I'll remember to go up here this time and say toolbox. Clean up resizability. Now, since this toolbox is a module, you don't actually need to include the name. I just kind of like to do it this way. Because I might have trouble remembering what these exactly are called, and sometimes it's easier just hitting that. Sometimes it's easier hitting toolbox dot and get my my um, IntelliSense for it. So let's see. Now I can resize. What happens? What do I mean by resize? Well, if I move the mouse over near the edge, notice how. And this is not layout view. This is normal regular form view. So as I move near the edge, notice how the cursor changes. And I'm now resizing live my form. The user can resize the form. He wants to show the job title, go for it. He doesn't care about the department, he can make it really small. I've set it up so there's a minimum, so you don't accidentally make the control just a single cell wide. So the default is, I think, 
it resizes to, to this dimension. Let's go see if we can do something in the, uh, in the single view form, kind of the same thing. I'll view the code and we go form load to box dot uh, precise ability, go to the close, clean up precise ability. Now I'm going to add a parameter here. So the default, you can see the resize mode. The default is resize width. Now I'm going to set it to resize width and height. So if we go look form home. Form view. Now I can still resize over here. But let's say you have, I don't know, some text box that has memo text. You have a long, long memo box. And you say, well, I want to resize it like this. I want more space for my text box. Let's say you have a really long text here. The user can resize it so he can view it more comfortably for him. And you can also resize both at the same time. Now, this would not be possible without the layout grid because the code is really just resizing this control, but moving around all of the other controls is something that the layout grid is doing for me. I'm just dynamically changing the width of this control, but since the other controls are within the layout grid, they're automatically going to be moved as well. I can even do the same in the continuous form and say I want my continuous form to resize width and height. And this is a bit more clunky. Uh, let's close that properly down. So even the continuous form, the user can resize and down. Let's go back to the presentation. So I can combine this with what I call a selector for my form select employee. Now what I have here is a single form that is, let's see it in design view first. So you can see it kind of looks like the other form. Uh, what I have is that I've set up some controls near the edge. So these are set to stretch, stretch across top. So this means that as I open up my form, it gets centered. Just one moment. So we have our form here. And you can see I, I still have my layout sortability. I have my filtering. There's no one called fire. That's weird. And I've added this form selector where you can say we've selected someone. And I don't know why it didn't find that. I think I originally had some code which would you could call to select an employee. Maybe I had it somewhere else. I really don't remember. The idea being that you have some code which would, if you needed to select an employee, instead of having you know a drop down of 10,000 employees, you could call this form. And instead of that drop down, you could then do your, your searching or your limitations and click the employee and then it would navigate to that employee. I think that was what I wanted to show with this form. And one more thing, all of this code I just mentioned, it works in reports as well. So let's take a look at our, this demo report. You see I have uh, a report and I've added that layout sortability. So the user can say, well, I want the report to be sorted by employee name. Uh, and actually I want the report to be just a tad wider for this and this control. And I don't care much about job titles. So I want it to look like this much more. Uh, so use something the user can easily use. Um, so if I had a show of hands, I hope 
you liked some of what you saw that you could use the, what you can use the layout grid for. I hope there's something useful for all of you. And now it's time for questions. Well, I know I've asked a couple questions in the in the route. Anybody else have any questions? You were talking about the Access UI, but uh, the Access UI XML. Well, what does it have to do with uh, today's layout grid? Georgia Anders and I were just talking at the begin, you know, during the beginning no, no, about. No, it's something that, that Anders mentioned while he was presenting the layout grid about halfway through. Yeah, so I, I just use it for the, the, the code is looking for the search control tag. So you could you could do it in other ways. Oh, okay, I I understand. Go ahead. I, I just use it like this because what if my if if I also wanted to use other tags for each control? So I, I don't want to limit it to to just having it. So I, I'll just look to see for this search control if something matches that. And I use some, I have some, I think I call it, yeah, so here it's actually just looking to see if if, uh, if it has this, this tag somewhere. This is my own custom function, which is going to return a collection of all the controls that matches this search control. I don't know if that answered your question. It's not really related to XML, really. It's just an XML style notation for, for ah, having this right. parameter. Any other uh, questions? Uh, is your file going to be available? I will give it to Dale, and then he can, uh, he can share it. I've spent my life in large organizations. I'm in a small organization. I'm not sure who, we got, who got stepped on. Go ahead, Anders, go ahead. I was just saying that I will I will uh, give this file to Dale, and I presume he can uh, share it with you or upload it on the site or something like that. You'll get the file, and you'll get all the code in here, and you're you're free to use it as you please. You can use it in your projects as much as you want. Just don't sell the actual code as something that you made. I mean, leave the uh, leave the comments in stuff like that. Thanks, Anders. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Anas. So if, if there's no other questions, uh, if you get any feedback, if you have any bugs about this, you can always email me at this address, the smileycodertools at gmail.com. And as I said, go visit my blog. I'll have to get it back up. It was taken down a couple of days ago. All right. Uh, thank you, Andrew.